So now we also have the designers who, as you can guess, design things. You'll have a lighting designer who will, you guessed it, design the lights. So they will say, okay, um, they'll sit in on a rehearsal or two, they'll look at the movements and they'll say, all right, at this point in, in Right, great. So another set of roles that we have are the designers. So you will have designers who will work on the costumes. We have designers who work on the lighting, the set and the sound. What do designers do? They design, you have a lighting designer who will most times be under the um, advice of the director. So the director will say, okay, I want a spotlight. I want um, half of the stage to be able to be bright red because there's a party scene um, or I want flashing lights here and there. And the lighting designer will say, okay, okay, okay. And they will have knowledge of how this space looks, the actual stage and the auditorium. And they will design a plot as to where you're going to hang um, another word for, well, not another word, but hanging lights in theater is called rigging. So they will create a drawing as to where you'll have to hang the different lights um, and how different colors are going to come together to make the play look good on stage. You have a set designer, obviously. They are going to design the set. They're going to come up with sketches. They're going to look at measurements and things like that. And then they're going to supervise the construction team. Now there's a term here, set dressers. Dressing the set um, is really looking at the smaller details. So this is something that um, that stage crew might do or that these the set constructors themselves might do. Um, but basically what they do, for instance, if, what the, if you do have set dressers, the construction team will build a bedroom and the set dressers will come in and they will get the sheets to go on the bed. They will get the curtains to go up. They will get books to fill a bookcase. So they really add these small details into making um, a, a set look believable. Please write that down. The sound designer, obviously, <laughs> designs the sound. Um, so if I need an ambulance sound effect, the sound designer is going to get that for me. If I need to have a voiceover, as in a recording of somebody speaking, the sound designer is going to record it and edit it for me. Um, and if I have recorded music, if I want to play a song by K Lion or whoever you're listening to, then the sound designer is going to source that for me and make sure that it's good quality. And we have a costume designer who obviously designs costumes. So they, all of these people will come up with plans and sketches, the, um, as in all the designers. Um, right. And please take note that costume and wardrobe are similar, but not exactly the same. We're going to talk about that in a second. But the designers are people who have to pay attention to the play. They have to know the play or the production quite well because I cannot be a costume designer and there's a play set in 1970 and I put my um, actors in clothes that people will wear in 2020, right? Um, in the same way, I cannot have a play that is about a very somber topic. And then I, as a lighting designer, have a whole set of flashing lights. You know, they have to really pay attention. They will speak to the director um, and consult along the process so that all of the decisions they make really enhance the production. So now let's look at the people who make the magic happen, the technicians and the crew. Now, these are people who don't necessarily have to be the only rehearsals that they really have to be in are tech rehearsals so they don't necessarily put um the research and the background information into their work but they kind of take 
orders and execute things and but they are really the magic of the process they make things happen so in the tech crew we'll have the lighting technicians so look at the flow you have the lighting designer who will then speak to the lighting technicians and then we'll talk about operators in a second um, but what they will do is obviously take the lighting designers instructions and make it happen they will rig the lights they'll focus the lights which means that they will um, look at whether the bulbs are in the right place, whether the um, colors are mixing properly, um, things like that. And they will operate the equipment. Set constructors are going to build the set. Um, sound technicians are going to set up the microphones. If you have body mics or if you need hanging mics, if you need a microphone on a stand, things like that. That's what the sound technician is going to do, and they'll make sure that all the equipment is working properly. Now, this is something I want everybody to take note of. Wardrobe comes into play during the production. All of these roles come into play during the performance itself, not necessarily during rehearsal. They might be in the technical rehearsals, which is all very close to the performance, but they only really come into play when we are ready to show it on stage. So the wardrobe team then, so what will happen is that the costume designer will instruct the seamstresses or they will source the costumes, beg, borrow or steal, and then they will disappear when the show is ready to go on stage. At this point in time, the wardrobe team takes over. What they do is that they monitor the costumes in between shows. So they'll make sure that the costumes are clean, that they're ironed. Um, if your pants rips during a dance, the wardrobe team will be there to sew up your pants. If your sleeve is too tight, the wardrobe team will be there to make an alteration and let your sleeve out. If I have a change in between a scene, somebody from the wardrobe team will come and help me to change. And they will hang up the costumes, do everything in an orderly fashion and so on. So this is the difference between wardrobe. Wardrobe is really about maintaining and monitoring the costumes when um, costume is about how that comes to be made. So we'll have a properties manager. So of course the word props comes from the long word properties and what they will do so this does not always exist sometimes the properties manager is just the set designer um and they will source all the props beg borrow or steal so if i need a pencil case a phone and a spray bottle the properties manager will go down the road and get a pencil case a spray bottle and whatever the next thing i just said was Set constructors will build the set and set dressers will dress the set as we discussed a little while ago. And then the stage crew are the people who are always dressed in black and the stage crew and the properties manager are quite usually the same person. Um, so they will move um, set in between performances and um, they kind of just manage everything that happens backstage during the show itself. And then we have a makeup artist, which is self-explanatory. Um, stage makeup is quite different from normal makeup usually. Um, you have makeup artists who are versed in special effects, so they'll be able to make a young person look very old, or they'll be able to make you look like you have a gash on your cheek, uh, things like that. Right, so though we have technicians, we have stage crew and things like that, usually in each department, there's one person who will operate it during the show. In a little while, we're going to talk about the stage manager and how they give cues. But basically, you'll have one person who's sitting down by the lighting desk or they're sitting down by a computer waiting to press play. That person is the operator the person who operates, obviously. Right, so we're moving on to stage management. So stage management is such a huge and important role that most times 
it's split up into the stage manager and the assistant stage manager. In England, they call them the deputy stage manager. In a nutshell, the stage manager manages everything. They are there throughout the rehearsal. They schedule everything. They speak to everybody who needs to be spoken to. They attend all the rehearsals. They keep notes on everything. They manage everybody's health and safety. Um, they communicate they ensure that communication is being done between the different teams and that things are happening when they need to happen and people are where they need to be when they need to be there. So a very important thing that the stage managers do, which a production really cannot function without, is they create a prompt book. What is a prompt book? So a prompt book contains the cues, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, what happens is that the director will direct a play and on the night that the show goes on stage, the director's job is done and they hand it completely over to the stage manager. So everything is in the stage manager's hands once the audience is ready to come and see. So during the performance itself, the stage manager is a person who is instructing the operators so that they will be operating the light and sound in the correct timing with the play itself. So we spoke about cues a little bit um, in the prompt book, which is the stage manager's Bible, they'll have cues. So a cue is an indication for something to happen. So if we're in the Papa building and I say, can somebody please turn off the lights? That is your cue to turn off the lights. So cues might be entrances and exits. So you have cues for performers and then you also have cues for the technical crew. So it might be that in this scene, when Shauna exits stage left, that is when I am supposed to enter stage right. Or it might be that when I scream at, after delivering a line where I say, wow, um, that is when thunder will come into the sky or will come onto the stage and things like that. So this is an example of a prompt book. And I just want everybody just to, to look at it for a second. So you'll see that you have the play script itself on one side. So this is something that the stage manager or the assistant stage manager will do. And then if you look down a little bit, you'll see when the stage is clear, um, he will call the lighting Q11, go. And then the lighting operator will operate that Q, which is a dim state. So the lights will go dim at that point in time. Then when somebody says drenched or steeples drowned the cocks, then lightning will flash. So the stage manager will have to tell the lighting operator at that time, go, put the lightning on. So they will be communicating over headphones at that point in time while the show is actually going on. So that all the lights, the blackouts, everything like that happens when it's supposed to happen. Now let's look at front of house, which is probably one of the simplest, but also a very important aspect of production. So a theater is sometimes called a house. Traditionally, it is called a house. So in particular, the house is where the audience is situated as opposed to the playing area, which is where um, the actors are playing, which is acting or the backstage area. So front of house people obviously deal with the audience, but they will deal with patrons. Um, also take note of how house lights are the house in the auditorium as opposed to the lights on the stage itself. So in front of house, you'll have ushers who are the people who will ever so graciously tell you where to sit and they'll tell you where not to sit. They might help out the elderly. They might help out people who can't walk upstairs. They'll direct them where to go uh, and things like that. If you have an emergency, the ushers will evacuate, will help you to evacuate to a muster point. The box office deals with ticketing, quite simple. You deal with people who want to buy tickets, people who want to return tickets, um, things like that. And they all work under the front of house manager. So now finally, 
we are going to look a little bit at the relationships um, between the different production roles. So you'll see at the top, we have the producer who will then hire stage manager and the assistant stage manager. So this is actually color coded. Um, the people in blue, the creative team, are people who only interact with the production during rehearsal. The people in purple are people who will only interact with the production before it is actually put on stage. Then the people in orange are the people who only actually come in when the show is on stage. Um, so you're not going to have ushers or um, box office people selling tickets when the show is not going on. You're not going to have wardrobe team or you're not going to have makeup people unless you're doing a dress rehearsal. You're not going to have those people in the space until the show is actually going on. But during rehearsals, you're going to have the acting director. You're going to have the choreographer. You're going to have those people dealing with it. So just take a minute. Again, I said the blue, um, the people in blue are the people who are there only during rehearsals. The people in purple are there um, only before the production actually reaches on stage. So of course, the design team, once the production is on stage, their work is done. Um, and then the people in orange are people who only come in when it's actually time to perform. So to wrap up, there's a lovely little website I'll also post the link for that has more information on the different roles. So as you get to see, there is really space for just about everybody in the theater. Um, for quiet people, for loud people, for different personalities, different skill sets, different interests, different talents. Not everybody has to be a performer and all of these people are absolutely crucial for the proper functioning of a production. Now, what will happen in a lot of cases, you won't have some of these roles because as I said, one person will do two things. Um, so you might have somebody from stage crew who is handling wardrobe. You might have a performer who is a makeup artist and will be doing the other performer's makeup or the performers might do their own makeup. And of course, all these people most times have to be paid. So a lot of times you won't have all the roles because you don't have a, the producer doesn't have such a big budget to be able to pay everybody. But as you can see, there's a host of careers and possibilities um, in theater that are really crucial to put in a production on. So if you have any questions at all, any questions, any questions, I encourage you to comment, ask me, and I will answer. Um, feel free to go back and take notes on anything because as I said, you are going to be asked questions on this. Thank you very much for paying attention.